Well, good morning. My name is Mitch Weisberg. Uh, I'm here from EdChat Interactive. It's 11 a.m. in New York, but I believe it's like 7.30 or 8.30, 8.30 p.m. in India. And we're here to talk about um, engaging uh, cross-curricular lessons for student creativity. And I'm gonna just share my screen a second because this is part of EdChat Interactive. Uh, we're offering these interactive webinars uh, so that we get to hear from educators around the world about interesting things that they're doing and, and sharing with other educators. And today we have Monica Joshi who has done some really incredible projects with students. And um, a little bird told me that she was recently honored as teacher of the year. So, um, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, she has a guest who she's gonna be inviting a little bit later also who is um, renowned in her own right, but I'll let Monica introduce her. And I will say we have other sessions that are coming up. Right now on the schedule, we have something on October 8th, something on October 25th. So if you're interested in um, using game-like rewards to improve engagement, or if you're interested in social emotional learning, uh, Lisa Parisi has been teaching for over 30 years. Um, uh, she is always interesting, you know, please feel free to sign up for those sessions as well. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to hand over controls to Monica and Monica, welcome. And I understand it's a lot warmer where you are than where I am. It's, it's about, uh, right now it's about 10 degrees Celsius here in the, uh, in the New York area. What's the temperature where you are? Yeah, hi, it is 36 degree here. Yeah, it's a little so bit very, warmer. Yeah, very good evening to all of you. And I'm sure that you all are excited for the today's webinar, though we shifted it a little, uh, extended the dates. So we, as Mish told that uh, we are talking about the cross-curricular lessons to unleash the students' creativity today. By me, Monica Joshi, IT head at Satpal Mitra School, India. And uh, it's been 22 years of uh, great, inspiring learning uh, involved with uh, lovely students and teachers and everyday learning from them. And that's where uh, I'm able to create lessons and share with you all. And I'm sure uh, today's uh, webinar will be also fruitful for that. And especially meeting the special guest uh, in some time. So. Uh, I'll, without further ado, I'll just be quickly sharing the screen. Uh, firstly, like uh, I just wanted to uh, ponder the thought on the topic, what we have chosen today, that is the cross-curricular lessons to unleash the student creativity. I would actually would like to draw your attention that why we would need the cross-curricular lessons uh, these days. I just, just wanted to draw your attention for that. It's, it's all about for the essential skills that students need. Uh, for that, that matters creativity, collaboration, and critical thinking. We will be talking about how the teacher can empower herself first, and then the students whom she is dealing every day in her daily life. So it's very important that the teacher herself should be full of life first, then only she can teach the students how she has, how the student has to be creative. So we have brought two of the uh, digital tools, whereas uh, in this pandemic time also, uh, technology has played a huge role in, uh, you know, revolutionizing our classrooms. So we have Adobe Spark, and 3D Bear with us. Mish, is my screen visible? Yes, your screen is visible. All right. And yes. people should know that if you come up to the top of your screen, if the image is either too large or too small, you can go up to the top of your screen and there's a view options and click on that and the zoom ratio, you can make the, uh, the screen share larger or smaller. And that might help some yeah. people. So as I told that we will be uh, touching today's lesson with the help of Adobe Spark 
and Sweetie Bear. So I will be very happy to share this lesson of mine with you all uh, later on after the webinar gets over. So I've just played my uh, presentation, which is made using the Spark web page. Uh, I, I will just turn off my camera. I think it's uh, hindering the internet connection. Will that be okay, Mish? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So as I introduce myself, uh, we will be touching the topic cross-curricular lessons to unleash the creativity. So I am a, I'm an MI, MI Minecraft Global Mentor, 3D Bear Ambassador also, Adobe Creative Ambassador, Teach SDGs Ambassador, Apple Teacher, Flipgrid Guide, Wakely Ambassador, and I love to write blogs. And I, you can find my blog on the 3D Bear website also, how you can uh, spark creativity into the classroom using 3D Bear. So we will be talking about like how we can create uh, compelling video stories with the help of Spark Video, Spark Post, and Spark Web Page to uh, you know uh, unleash creativity into the classroom with the cross curriculum lessons. So like I was talking about why why these lessons are important because it helps to you know kind of spark for the four C's, what we talk about, that is the creativity, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, which is very important. Uh, children have, have to have these skills, essential skills. And it is only possible if the teacher has designed, made her lesson and make her learners learn the way she wanted her learners to move on. So I'll be quickly showing you one of the video to show how uh, we at Satpal Middle School, I'm from Satpal Middle School, how we at Satpal Middle School are using, you know, uh, spark to uh, spark creativity amongst our students by taking care of all the four C's. So I'll be quickly showing you this video. big video so I just showed you the snippets like how we are using uh, in each area uh, like how to spark creativity how to spark critical thinking amongst the students communication collaboration so just little examples by using it with posters creating the newsletters and uh, lots of other things so I'll just be taking you down and taking you giving you an example of the English classroom uh, so that, you know, we are telling a story with memory and perspective. I'm showing you two scenarios, wherein on the left side, I have a picture uh, prompt, and on the right side, I have a text written, wherein the child has to complete the creative writing. So you can just have a view and see 
uh, it's written, I fell off a horse when I was eight and my mom got scared and I was scared. We both had fear and anxiety. So complete the creative writing. If this question is given to a student, like on the right side, there's a text and on the left side, the uh, picture is there. I would like to throw this question uh, to the audience. Actually, I'm just putting the poll and let's see, uh, have the result. Which one would you prefer the child will be able to understand the text or the visual? Okay, I'm, I'm getting the result quite evident, but yes, then I'll, I'll be sharing it with you quickly. And it looks like most of the people who are going to respond are, have now responded. Okay, so shall we wait or move ahead? No, I think we can move on and show, share yeah. the results. All right, so I'll be sharing the results. So the results are like 89% of says the visual prompt with the picture and uh, one, one, eleven percent says the text. So, so that's that's quite evident. That visual prompt is always, you know, kind of uh, appealing and is clear with the students uh, how you have to engage them in a better way. So this was just one of the example where you can give one of the classroom project to help your children to understand that how creative the applications in literature and writing courses can enhance the critical thinking, communication and collaboration. So like uh, as our topic of the today and those, webinar, those prompts, how did you build the graphics for those prompts? Like, yeah, so, and how much, how much more time does it take? Would you say so, to build the prompts with graphics than to just do the text-based? Yeah, so these graphics have been prepared with the Adobe Spark Post. And I, I just took around one minute, the time I took in writing. Uh, it, there are ready-made templates in Adobe Spark, ready-made styles. You just have to pick and choose the picture and just write the more, uh, the time you consumed in writing the text as a normal text, the same way you have written it on the Spark post with the help of a graphic. So that's what the time is uh, uh, consumed and your, you know, engaging children becomes more interesting that way. And so if you put these together and you were in school, you could then just display these prompts on your whiteboard. And if you're out of school, you could share them either on a website or you can share them if you're interacting with the students live like zoom you can share them like this through zoom correct yeah yeah whichever medium we are using for the online classes we can always use there and then uh, the children responds to such items quickly That's, these are great thank you yeah so uh, the next is I'm just going to share about the lesson that is, uh, this is very, you know, a kind of a creative lesson of mine in which I have used interdisciplinary learning, which any of the teacher can use into the classroom. And, and uh, like I told you why interdisciplinary learning or the cross -cur curriculum learning is necessary. So I'll be quickly showing you a lesson which is involving the game-based learning also. So here I have just put a link which is actually transferring me to another Adobe Spark web page. So the Spark web pages are having a website kind of feature which helps you to add in another videos, add in another post, YouTube videos, and a lot of other hyperlinks also. So it's a transdisciplinary lesson uh, on the topic life on land. So the objective of the topic is like uh, to demonstrate how games can be powerful way to simulate engagement and play a significant role in experiential learning. 
and reinforcement of the content with effective classroom management. That's very important. If you're managing your class well, so you know half of the time, half of your time is saved. So uh, why the gamified learning is very dear to me. Why so? Because you know it empowers the students. It promotes persistence. It's uh, help in self-regulation, develops the social skills, creates self-directed learning communities, helps the children to plan risk taking and regulates the students to play with ideas. So that's what game-based learning is all about. So, you know, in the mystery Skype, so the topic is life on land. So in the mystery Skype, you, the students were having a mystery Skype with some other country, okay, to guess you, from which country you are. Many of you must have played Mystery Skype or, uh, or on the online maps, the students have to investigate the effects of overpopulation or where, where, you know, where is the population more or where is the population less. So the teacher has given the topic to the students and to have a research-based learning. So I'll be showing you the work of students that was submitted uh, by, to, by the students to the teacher that has also again been put up here in the form of a link. So I'll be opening another Spark web page. So you can see uh, like a website, you have a reference to another web pages. So the same feature the web page also has. So this is a work done by the students. You know, students have worked in the collaboration. So they have, you know, given the topic name population explosion and then introduced like what are the effect of the population and uh, you know in the world population how is the population increasing like so this is the case study so researched by students and submitted to the teacher and then kind of uh, they prepared a video which i'll be showing you later and uh, is submitted by them and then here you know uh, there is uh, instead of a uh, having a normal you know test a very interesting thing has been put up here because the topic was uh, overpopulation ill effects of overpopulation so what has been done a caption contest was given to the students so it it is like this caption was given and this cap this spark post this uh, poster has also been made with the help of spark post only so instead of you know giving them to write big paragraphs or another thing just have the uh, evaluation or their knowledge testing in an interactive way so that uh, they are you know engaged and their skills are enhanced also so the children had to you know see this picture and had to submit this uh, to the teacher and then after that, uh, you know, when the chapter is done, so it is like, it's time to reflect. So it was a flip grid where the children had to record their version. What are the ill effects of the population? So it, here the flip grid has been introduced and then, you know, it, it is kind of, there are always shy children in your class who may not come forward. But then, you know, Flipgrid is a tool which will help you to, you know, kind of uh, have the best response from such children who, who are always quiet in the classroom. So you, uh, that's uh, used here. So this is one of the lessons, like I, I just told you how it has been used in geography. Then comes in science and then our topic is life on land. So, you know, uh, the teacher is covering uh, different types of animals and their habitat. So you can see here a spark post used for the mind map. You must have seen mind map, okay, the center idea in the, in the main idea in the center and with the help of arcs and lines, it's branching with the help of arrows and lines. But have you thought of a mind map like this? A pictorial mind map and an interactive mind map also. So you see in the middle, the polar bear is there and then in the rectangle boxes the classification the you know what what are the characteristics of the polar bear those are shown here like polar bear has long neck small ears 
and then uh, you know padded feet all all those characteristics and how it is used and same way the animals can be introduced to the children by you know kind of giving their characteristics with and with the help of a mind map and that too also mind map uh, in a very interactive way which is made just with simple colored square boxes and used with the help of spark post and uh, i i am sure this will help uh, them to have a long lasting learning so so, so something like like this what you would give to the students is you might give each student a different animal or a different topic um, and have them then fill in the eight squares around that topic with interesting facts about that topic or that animal, right? Yes. That's how you would assign so, for the students. Yes, that's that's there. Yeah, that's another. That's a that's a great way of getting the students to think about facts about you know basically any topics because this is so this is an animal, but you could have a picture yeah. of a country and they have to come up with eight facts about the country around it, or, or it could yeah. be um about a flower or about a, a a famous person it really could this could be used with just about anything it, it can be anything so that's what we are talking about that cross-curricular learning helps in enhancing the critical thinking skills so you know they have to develop the idea and then generate and then put it up so next uh, i'll just be quickly talking about okay the teacher has uh, explained uh, the animals about the polar bear. So she wanted to take an assessment. She made, okay, uh, assessment, it's form of a written question and answer. She made the assessment uh, title only so interesting. So you see assessment, let's have fun. So are you a polar bear fan? Instead of writing uh, today is the paper, instead of writing that. So she made that assessment also fun. So it's a kind of a Kahoot quiz. So when you click in here, the Kahoot quiz comes up and the children are playing those quiz. And after playing those quiz, you know, uh, I really love uh, to, you know, uh, motivate my children by giving them different badges. And uh, even now these days also, and, and before that also, I even I do with my teachers also. So, you know, giving digital badges or stickers or something like that. So how about if you design such badges in Adobe Spark web, web post? So you see, I have made Superstar. This is one of the badge, which is, you know, digital certificate, which, which will be given to the students. Then helping hand, suppose it's like if some student was weak and the other has help, so that can be given. So it's about your, you know, need and creativity, what type of badge you want to make. And then hard work hero. So different type of certificates have been made, which you can give as a digital certificate to your students. And I didn't do anything. This was a ready-made template. I just wrote hard work hero on that and just selected the font. So it just took me, you know, five minutes to create all these three certificates. So the same thing we were talking about life on land. So, uh, you know, I have a topic now, perimeter and area. Now, how to teach this uh, with, you know, life on land. So, uh, I've used, interestingly here, MS Paint to, you know, calculate the area and perimeter of the uh, animals. So, what we did, we told the children to fill in, to create giraffe. So the boxes which are filled are, uh, you know, calculated, counted, because it's a grid. So the boxes which are filled are counted, and then, you know, it was helped to find out the perimeter or area of that animal as per the formula. So the paintbrush has been used so constructively to teach area and perimeter in mathematics. And same way, you can use Excel also, and even you can use online maps also to teach the area and perimeter. So, you know, you can just uh, find out the place and then just go and say, okay, this is, this is the area of a specific region and just calculate it. And further, the distance can be calculated that you travel from one place to the another, what is the area or what is the perimeter? 
of that place. So that can be uh, taught, uh, taught using the online maps also. So here maps is used. So as this is my one of my favorites, the mind graph. So I, I can, I'll, when I'll share this lesson, you can all watch how area and volume has been taught with the help of Minecraft uh, using gamification. And this was used as a uh, evaluation process where the children were given the empty boards. So they have to calculate the area and volume and write it there. And then teacher has calculated and then given them badges later on the basis of that. So here are also uh, some examples. And this is also made using Spark. Let's measure the things, the leaf, the area of a particular place, the distance travel, the parameter. So this is also one of the post. Instead of giving the, my point is that instead of giving the normal written question, you can always give the question in a form of a visual post, which will be interesting because there are always learners in the class. Uh, I feel I, I, if I look at myself also, I learn quickly by looking at the visual things. And if I, so sometimes here also I, I understand things quickly. So we, we have to cater to the needs of all those learners and can make our learning interactive so that it is more interesting also and so that we, we are able to gauge what are the students understanding. Then uh, next is the yeah, language. I know, I know that um, the purpose of today is not to act, go into the exact ways of doing each thing, but to show uh, the people who are coming uh, different things that one could do, but let's say that they wanted um, that what, what you have there is using pictures in order to um, measure parameter or area and they yeah. wanted to learn how to do that. Where would they turn to learn how to do that? Are there, um, should they contact you and you can give them resources or are there resources you want to share with people now? Yeah. Because this looks really interesting is, is instead of just giving a word problem, you show a picture of something and you teach, you know, you teach parameter, um, teach measurement, teach um, area by having the students do with the picture. If they wanted to find out more exactly how to do that, where would they turn? Yes. Okay. So let's move further. We, we, why, why should we, uh, leave the languages far behind. So what we did, we did included the regional language or your English language to compose poem or share their view, how they had spent their summer holidays using the digital story. So I'll be showing the digital story first and then how the uh, poem recitation had been done. So it's a, kind, it's a student's work where the student has used the visual medium to create a scrapbook kind of thing. I'll be quickly browsing. So like this, this is a student work. So visiting different places. So that, that has been shown, you know, how, how the student has spent the summer vacation. So it's a kind of a digital story which was made and submitted. And then we, Flipgrid would, was used to, you know, kind of have the poems or their views. Few doesn't want to, uh, you know, do not want to reside the poems. So they had recorded their views, how, they had, you know, spent the summer vacations where they, the places those they have visited. So, you know, like that, that sort of. So how, how, how it is all about. So this, this was, you know, across curriculum learning, a transdisciplinary learning on the topic life on land, same like that. You can use any topic and, you know, kind of uh, make the lesson interesting. Like I have used the game-based uh, learning, you can make it make it as project based learning by, you know, kind of having different subjects and make it having uh, transdisciplinary learning. So that way, this was including the subjects which I have given you the example. I believe that, uh, you know, each word, each word can be used as a transdisciplinary learning. I'll be quickly showing you how it is like. So here, here is a word called approximate, you know, so you, it's not that you have to teach a particular topic or a concept using the transdisciplinary learning. You can teach through 
a particular word also so here the approximate word has been told how it has been used as an adjective how it has been used as a verb what is the synonym of this word what is the antonym of this word how what is the relation if we, if you have to use it in history subject how it is has to be written you know and then it's written the approximate time the roman spent in britain was 400 years so particular word related in with history mathematics i approximate that the answer will be between 4.5 and 4.9 so you know and the interesting thing is how it has been displayed again a spark post has been used to display this you know interdisciplinary learning through the particular work so same like that uh, an interesting spark post is made again how you will you know correlate the word derive so like you it is if it is related with the linguistic so it is you know, like it has been coffee derives from the turkish word kahwa so how it has to be used as verb synonym you know how it is used in science how it is used in past tense you know grammar is used so you can use how i mean like how you have to teach a particular word and in this way you know the language concepts are also taken care of and next is uh, interpretation and uh, i have taken these uh, spark po web spark post from the website called mysparkwords.com these are not my creation these are taken from mysparkwords.com and in case you have to use it into your classroom there are lots of you know kind of uh, spark post where with the help of which you can teach the meaning of each word to your children in an interesting way so see here so beautifully the uh, meaning of interpretation is explained how it will be used in science in philosophy and in music what are the synonyms of this word what are what is the noun so at one place you have you know collaborated all the subjects all those things and kind of these things can be shared with the children they can save it in their library and in, in case you, you know you have a website kind of this or a spark web page kind of this you can always post there and your children know that okay our teacher is daily sharing these things and then it's a lifelong collection for them also and it it looks like cuz i went to mysparkwords.com it looks like they have about 50 words there uh 50 or 60 words and then also they have a link so that you could make your own um, yes your own uses of the words once once you get their style yes so it's by one of the adobe educationist mark dana so you know you you can always follow him on twitter and he posts wonderful collections it's always uh, you know uh, kind of good feeling to get connected with like minded people who with the help of whom your knowledge get enhanced and i i like to learn and i like to you know share it with other teachers also that if you learn something you should share and use it in your classroom so that your children children can also benefit so same way you know when you have to give a paragraph on plastic pollution instead of just writing okay children we have a uh, 200 word challenge just write uh, a paragraph on plastic pollution so it can be made very interactive like this okay so i'll just show you first of all you know you have to explain what is plastic pollution so in this uh, spark web page we have uh, it has been a video has been placed where the plast about the plastic pollution instead of teacher explaining what is plastic pollution how do i get access to first adobe spark there's a link spark.adobe.com so plastic pollution research it's given what is plastic pollution the thinking question thinking mechanism is given okay once you are done you can give the link here you can give the link of form google form microsoft form whatever where the child has to submit after viewing the video the child will develop its own her, his or her own idea and can submit the work to you after that should we be 
concern about the plastic pollution we are discussing this to this topic further then could we end the plastic production entirely could society survive without any plastic at all then section 3 is who is responsible for plastic pollution individuals who buy it or the company uh, that make it why and then section 4 what are some of the ways which could reduce you your use of single plastic so you know these are kind of hints given besides the video and such a beautiful way to explain uh, to uh, you know uh, to develop the creative writing skills of the students so i i yeah, really like find, this idea yeah i find the idea of plastic pollution or pollution in general is something that really attracts kids and so yeah if given giving them the opportunity to talk about what they know about pollution and what the problems are about pollution and what their solutions would be to to solution pollution really gets them to do you know research creative thinking um communications without even realizing that they're that they're learning those skills yeah exactly so it it can be any topic we can always give we can always give a topic like okay uh are games good or bad something like that a topic which is actually touchy to them <laughs> you know yeah so okay like i told you we uh, we are uh, doing all this for uh, you know enhancing the skills of our learners so how about if we listen from the mouth of the learner only how is the learner's experience of getting uh, connected with the teacher through these applications so i have a guest here a student so she will be talking about uh, her use of you know uh, adobe spark and 3d bear with all of you And while we're waiting, if any of you have examples of where ah she's here, but if any of you have examples of where you have used multidisciplinary classes, maybe put them into the chat so you can share them with others. And then um, and welcome. I'll, I'll move myself down. Hello everyone. I am Namya Joshi, and I study in Grade Eight in Sapporo Middle School, Lutana, Punjab, in India. So I'm going to share some of my experience. and how i like using adobe spark and why i think it can be used in the classroom so first of all i'll give you an example we were given um a homework by a teacher to write an essay on what have we done during this covid-19 lockdown and i had a different idea rather than script scribbling down it on the paper i thought i could create a photo essay So I was thinking about a catchy title, and that was I thought about a journey of self-exploration because I could explore myself more during this lockdown, and I learned many new things. So I uh, I've used this Adobe Spark post to create the photo essay, and my teacher really loved it, and she said that it's a really good mean of writing your essay because it becomes really interesting to read as well. and here you can see like uh, whatever i used to write on the paper i have depicted that using these images but namia i will say that you never want to tell a parent that household chores can be fun right i mean it's okay to tell that to a teacher but never tell your parent that right um sorry i couldn't get you oh. i actually your voice is cracking a little bit could you please repeat sir okay i i would have thought that one should never tell their parent that household chores can be fun it it might be okay to tell a teacher but i would i don't think my kids have ever told me that household chores could be fun um i i agree with you but actually if you have nothing to do i think sometimes they can be fun because if you're having like ample time and like not doing 
every household too, but if you can help someone or your parent uh, to help to do just a small thing, not doing the dishes and washing the clothes, but just a little bit help. They can be a little bit fun, but I wouldn't say that it's completely the thing you would want to do the entire day. Thank you. Thank you. So now comes the icing on the cake. That is how we can use Adobe Spark and 3D Wear together. And as you can see, this poster has also been made in Adobe Spark. Now, uh, so here, as you can see, a fairy tale scene has been uh, was presented to the students. So as you can see, here we have added lots of elements which are from 3D Bear, like the polar bears, um, the uh, giraffes, the zebras, and monkeys and fairies. So uh, I'll first of all tell you what is 3D Bear. So it is an application in which you can create 2D or 3D videos and still images. So it has been integrated that the 3D Bear and Spark Post has been used together. And the images of all the things which I mentioned have been added from 3D Bear. So what has been done mainly is that the uh, images have been inserted from 3D Bear into Spark Post to uh, make it like more interactive and make it look more beautiful and ex uh, explain the story in a better way. Now let's come to another example. So don't you think it's a lovely spark post with a bee design as it is quite vibrant? So our teacher also gave one more problem statement to us. That is you have to redesign a public space. So this is a public railway station which has been redesigned by adding elements. Like over here we've added a pine tree and we've added a few lavender flowers and a person sitting on the benches and even this uh, red sofa. Um, so I'll give you one funny example as well. Um, my mother, what she did was, she actually clicked the picture of my messy cupboard. She already had like um, the better one earlier. So she sent me, uh, she actually first of all put that in 3D bear and she just wrote before, after and added two elements and sent that to me on email. Mm -hmm. And I was just checking to my emails because I like to do it at the end of the day. And I saw that she sent that to me and uh, that, that was just a reminder to me to go and uh, sell your cupboard, otherwise I'll cut off your tools. So you can even and say Nam that- And Namia, what would be an example of, a, of something that you would want your mother to do that you could, you could do a, a scene and you could send to her? Um, to my mother, um, I think I would just tell her that, um, actually, there's nothing wrong in her. She's actually perfect. So I don't know anything else. So she must be listening. Yeah, she's there. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't think about it right now because I don't see anything wrong with her. So uh, I would agree with you. Actually, we, I think we, I, according to me, I think we're also using 3D Bear for visual reminders. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is one of the videos in which we've explained how we can use pollination and it has been explained using 3D Bear. So I'll just show you a small clipping of that. Hi kids. I hope you all are doing good. Today we will take a walk in the bee garden. Look, the fairy honey bees are enjoying themselves, drinking nectar from the flowers. And then they will relax in the beehives and make honey. <laughs> you know, children, bees help in flower pollination. Pollination is a process by which the plants are able to multiply. When the bee sits on the flower to drink its nectar, the pollen grains, they stick to its body. And when it sits on the other flower, they get transferred and thus help in the process of pollination. So next time you see a bee sitting on the flowers, don't disturb. Bye, take care. So wasn't that interesting? I just love that. So I'll show you one more video a clipping of that video in which uh, we've explained that what are the uh, if ill effects of overpopulation as it was just mentioned by my mother 
and I'll just show you like how it actually looks like. So here, this has been made using Spark video actually, but I also added some of them using Spark post. I created some of uh, the pages in the Spark post and then added them in the video. Next, um, we have this TEDx Youth LSPMS Live poster, which I've created in Adobe Spark post. And the X, as you can see over here, looks kind of nice. So I actually selected a layout that was already having a yellow colored X in that. And I changed the color and, and I, I added some details. And in the end, my teacher said it looks really nice. It's actually better than the TEDx poster as well. And I would also uh, like to share one more thing with you. It's not like you can only do Spark post alone and just put your knowledge into it. You can also collaborate with other friends of yours and students and share your learning with them and they can give you more ideas and then you can collaborate so it's just like playing multiplayer in Minecraft, you're playing multiplayer in Adobe Spark post. And that's quite interesting. So thank you so much. Nami, I have to say thank you. You are an incredible individual and I can't wait to see what you do in the future. Um, I think you have a great future in front of you and um, you're, you're very inspired. You're, you're, you're an inspiration. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. So that was listening uh, from the students' perspective. And I'm sure that uh, the teachers are very clear how the students can be involved uh, with the with three D Bear uh, doing uh, you know doing work multiple player and with Spark Post also, so that they can work collaboratively. So the collaboration is taken care of and uh, they can better communicate with that. So with that, uh, I have a link here where, you know, you can use the Spark Post in, you know, OneNote, you can use it in Flipgrid, you can use it in Wakely, and then you can use it in Microsoft Teams also, and in the Google Classrooms as well. So you can use, you can, you know, insert it there also. So I, I have a very, you know, kind of a visual story. We have created the report cards, the journey of all the students. So I, I cannot stop myself uh, to share it with you, you know. So here we have made the journey of each student, a kind of a portfolio. Uh, how, what is the journey of the student during this remote learning period? So you all give the handwritten report card. So we have used Spark web page uh, for you know giving a kind of a visual uh, portfolio to them. So it is like this. You can all all have a quick view. I can't couldn't stop you know to share this with you all. So it is 
how it is created, what all the modules the child has covered, and these the links of the modules are given, and how are the teachers working hard for them? What are the what how are the children participating in them? So same way, like it is uh, shown in the form of collage. Each student's separate journey has been created and has been shared with the parents. So such a beautiful way to create the portfolio and share it with the parents. And visual portfolio is always a you know a kind of a memory with them. So here it's showing the their progress and how we are working for the environmental science. What all activities are being used? How are the children doing those activities and submitting it to them? What is the work? You know, the kids are at home. They are doing little written work also. So they are writing and then they, are sub they have submitted for each child the work is there. And then, you know, a kind of a version from the students, what they have learned, what they have learned in English, what they have learned in maths, then a game, hide and seek you know, a kind of timetable. How are they learning? You know, this is a regional language of Punjab. So, so this is a kind, kind of a small portfolio, you know, a beautiful way in an interactive way to show the journey. What are they learning in art? So all these subjects, what are they learning in clay? So this is the version from children on Independence Day in the form of a flip grid. So this is about taking care of themselves by doing the exercise. So this is given. And then this is the parents appreciation. We appreciate all you do. So yeah, so it was how, all about how long would you say it would it took to create that portfolio for the kids how, about how many hours worth of work do you think or days worth of work so uh if you have the material with you you just have to pick and place uh if a teacher is a normal teacher i say i i'm not talking about myself it it will take you know you have when before you have to create obviously we have we plan everything no it's not like we sit and we start placing the things we plan the layout. So once your layout is planned, I think it will not take more than 15 to 20 minutes to create that. And it takes more time in writing, writing the comment for each, uh, you know, student, writing remarks for each student, complimenting for each student. So like that. So what we have done, the remarks and the comments are kept in one of the drive in an Excel file, shared file where each teacher has pasted it there. So the class teacher does what? Copy and paste it here. So 15 to 20 minutes for one child if you have the material. And the material is sent by the students to the teacher. Not only sent, they have been given a shared folder in Microsoft Teams. They are pasting it there and the teacher is taking from there and putting it here. So if you already had artifacts that the students had done, and yeah. if you just wanted to then share those artifacts with the parents with your comments in yeah. maybe 15 minutes, maybe at most a half an hour, you most could set up a an hour. Yeah, you could set yeah. up a website like this that would yeah. really impress the parents and make them feel yes. that they were part of the class. Yes. That's yeah. great. It's, yeah, it's just, you know, one a kind of a journey we have done. We have shared that how the whole learning for all the students done. The same way we have done like individualized for all for the students. And that's something really commendable that ha has been done by our school teachers. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah. So I, I think I have shared enough of the example. I am happy to, you know, if anybody is having any question and answer. Would, if would people to wanted that. to access this, how could they access this uh, presentation? Is there a QR code or is there a, um, a URL that maybe we could put into the chat? I'll just quickly share this. We, we have, I'll, 
just a second i'll just show i'll just have to click on share and then i have to publish and share this link and once the link comes you can share it on any of these medium okay and if like i have already created this link and i've shared it so i just have to click on update the link even you can uh, put up this link in a, in the form of embedded code on the website i'm just refreshing the link and will copy and put up in the chat window so that uh, you know yes if you can put it into the chat there. window here that would be great yeah i'm just sharing it so okay. my link is ready so as you you know we can share on facebook twitter google classroom teams email and embedded code mm -hmm. directly from here only we can we can do that so i here stop share and i'm pasting this link into the window for the audience and you know they can use this Okay, I think, uh, Mish, I can just send it to you. you okay, or just click on through. chat. Or oh, it's in there, right. Okay, that's great. And then yeah. I see that there's a question from uh, Neelam Anand. Uh, can you share the link for the Minecraft on angles you were talking about? Or is yeah, that in I the pre just, presentation? Uh, it's in the presentation. Everything okay. is in the presentation. Okay, that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah. otherwise, I will type the link of the uh, you know YouTube channel of my daughter. Her, you have that. Oh, you know I, the course can, material there as well. Can I share that Spark URL yes. with everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes, you can. Right. You can share that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put yeah. that into the chat with everybody so that. Every, so here's here's the link to the presentation and the Minecraft link is within there. Great. Yeah. So if you had one closing thought for everybody. <laughs> one we'll closing get, thought. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it it is like like I I, I uh, told last time also we have to talk the language what our learners understand. So, you know, uh, it's time that we should challenge ourselves and talk the language they understand. We have to be creative first. Only then we can tell our children that uh, learn creativity. If we do not know how to be creative, we can't tell our children to be creative, be critical thinkers, be problem solvers. So, you know, it is both ways. It goes hand in hand. Now, one of the problems is that if you're trying to be creative and you're trying things, you might make mistakes. And yeah. in, in many cultures in schools or um, at work, if you try to make mistakes, you get penalized. How do you change your own mindset and how do you set up for your students so that make, make us all know that it's okay to be to make mistakes because that's how we learn? How do you do that? And the best way is to learn from your students. Right. I, I love I love to learn from your students, mm -hmm. and I, I I think if I'm giving a webinar here today, I I have the you know capacity to learn from my students, to learn from each and everybody, and from this audiences only. There are so many from whom I'm learning daily, and I'm inspired from them. So that's that's the best way. Well, you yourself are very inspiring. <laughs> That means a lot. It's coming. It's coming from you. Well, thank you. Know, you yes, you know, it's it's was all first webinar. I always remember, and then you know, I had, I was having very apprehensive. How is my presentation on three D bear when I use? And the best thing with me is that I always give any application to use and to learn is to my students, and I then say them, teach me. And you know, it is so much of joy seeing on their face. You know that yes, mm -hmm. we are teaching our teacher. That's the best thing, and it it only motivates students. And I have always taken Namya as a student of mine, and I always learn from her a lot. So you know, that was very inspiring when you said that my presentation is very good. I'm doing incredible work. <laughs> oh, you, well, you are, you are, and I'm sure everybody in the audience can echo that. Maybe you can put it into uh, the chat because I think. You know, I, I, I learned a lot from you. I learned a lot from Namia. Um, 
I, and I'm sure that everybody else did. And, you know, if NAMIA wants to do more chores, we have plenty of work here in our house also that we can give her. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of, you know, involvement. Uh, what we, we were talking about, the kids have to be self-reliant these days. So it's very mm -hmm. important that they, they should learn uh, life skills. And that's what AFS also talked about. Only oh, yes, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so only she'll be able to, you know, kind of come and attend the AFS camp. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Well, thank you. And I know it's evening. Uh, it's a little bit late in India. Uh, it's only midday here in the U.S. But, um, you know, as you did last time, you know, um, there's, there's a lot of material here, a lot to learn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you and look forward to talking in the future. Let's keep yeah. in touch can, online. Uh, can, have you seen the questions in the chat room? Yes, yes. And I think that you've answered all of them. Because as right. the questions have been coming in, I've been, I've been relay, relaying them to you. And there are, uh, okay. a lot of people are saying thank you and that they learned a lot from you. And yeah, I'm sure you get that all so the much. time because I'm sure a lot of people learn a lot from you. Yes, and I learn a lot from them as well. So, well, ha have a good evening. Say uh, th yeah. uh, thank you again to Nanya uh, for her presentation. And um, I, I, I think she's going to do great things, just like her mom. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, uh, everybody, to be on this webinar today. And uh, I'm really happy uh, that I delivered this talk with you all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mish. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Bye. Bye-bye.